today we're going to speak about something amazing. Uh, there's Hollywood in California, but there's Bollywood in India. And Bollywood is much bigger in terms of number of movies they produce than Hollywood in Florida. But what is even more amazing is the role that Indian Jews played in that Bollywood. It seems like Jews are attracted to these things that violate all Torah laws. Now, and we're going to, we're going to have today our honored guest from previous conversation, Navraz J. Afridi, who is now, uh, no, I'm, still an assistant, I'm still an assistant professor. I'm still an assistant professor at Presidency University. Well, that's uh, good. And he's also probably the only person in the whole India that teaches Jewish studies. You know, and uh, that is one of the reasons we invited him because it's although there's almost no Jews in India, it seems that there are some, and we can learn all kinds of things from historic and present day experience of our people there. In any case, Navras, welcome to Chicago Jewish Cafe. Th thank you so much, Alex. Thanks for having me here on your show. It's our pleasure and thank you for your time and your expertise. So today we're going to continue our conversation and we're going to focus on Bollywood. Let me ask you, you know, if you would not have mentioned it before to me, I would not even think about it. But thanks to you, you know, now I took a look at some things, but of course I'm not an expert. You are. And I'd like you to tell us about what Jews of India are doing in Indian movies and why and how what well this is interesting something that few people realize that Indian cinema owes a deep debt of gratitude to its smallest religious minority in fact a minority within that minority in our previous conversation we spoke about the uh, breakup of uh, Indian Jewry. We spoke about the different divisions within Indian Jewry. So one of the several Indian Jewish communities is the Baghdadi Jewish community. And most of India's earliest film stars, female film stars, came from this community. Now, before we move any further ahead on this subject, I think it is important to also tell our listeners a little about the importance and significance of Indian cinema. Bollywood is a term that is seen as very problematic by a number of people. Because what has come to be seen as Bollywood is actually the Hindi cinema produced in Bombay, in the city of Bombay what is now called Mumbai. But the film industry in Bombay, what is now called Mumbai, is just one of the several film industries in India. It is not the only film industry. And also the films produced in the Hindi language aren't the only films produced in India. India produces films in 20 different languages, more than a thousand films annually, which is three times more than Hollywood does. And now uh, it has viewership across the world because Indians form the, the world's largest diaspora uh, spread across the world. And wherever Indians are, they love to watch films produced in India in different languages. But of course, the films made in Hindi have the largest viewership. I, I think, uh, Navaraz, I think I told you in our conversation that when I was growing up, still little, you know, back in the Soviet Union, and uh, my mother and father would go to the movie, it was very often Indian-made movie. And um, it, 
there was dancing and singing all the time. You know, the, the moment somebody cries, there's singing and somebody smiles, there's dancing and all kinds of things. And my mother uh, and other women in the theater would cry and cry and cry. And I would sit and look at them there and think, what are they crying about? I don't understand. So... <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, but but the movie I do remember and the actor I do remember is of course Raj Kapoor, you know, and um, uh, and his Thief of Baghdad movie, you know, which. Right, right. So please, I'm sorry for interruption. Continue. No, 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 that that's okay. We all know that it was the Lumiere brothers who invented the camera and the moving pictures, and uh, cinema reached India fairly early. Uh, uh, if I'm not wrong, it was an, an, uh, some movie equipment that was being shipped to Australia and uh, en route, the stopover was Bombay. And that's how cinema reached Bombay. So India started producing films fairly early. But uh, the, the person, the man who, made, who produced India's first feature film, he had a hard time finding a woman to play the female roles, not even the prostitutes. Even the prostitutes did not agree to act in films because they felt that uh, it was very demeaning to do so. Indulgence of women in performing arts was a taboo at that time. And uh, it is for this reason that prostitutes who slept with men felt that although they did something that was perceived as unethical by society, yet they did so at with one man at a time. But if, we, if they acted in films, it would be like exhibiting themselves before the entire nation at once. So that is why there was great hesitation, reluctance, inhibition on the part of even prostitutes when it came to acting in films. So the, in the early films, all female roles were played by skinny, thin men, young, skinny men. But the, the brave women who paved the way for women from respectable families, from other communities to act in films were the women from the Baghdadi Jewish community. And uh, Indian Jewry is made up of Baghdadi Jews, Kochni Jews, Ben Israel Jews. At that time, there were only these three communities. The Judaizing movements hadn't emerged in the country. So there were no Jews that, in existence that came, that appeared as a result of these Judaizing movements. So the Jewish presence was made up of only these three communities. And of these three communities, the Ben Israel, and the Kochri Jews had been resident in India for centuries. And they had the same sensibilities, the same sensitivities as the rest of the Indian population. But it wasn't so with the Baghdadis, because the Baghdadis, who came from a number of Middle Eastern countries, not just from the city of Baghdad, but in the colloquial language, they came to be known as Baghdadis, because Baghdad was then a major center of commerce. They settled in India between the decades of 1790s and 1830s. They came to India deeply steeped in Arabian culture. They were absolutely Arab when, when it comes to language, culture, their attire. But ex except for their faith, their religion, their religion was, of course, Judaism. But it did not take them very long to realize that it was wiser to identify with the colonizer rather than the colonized, to identify with the ruler rather than the subjects. So they deliberately tried to anglicize themselves. And they, the Baghdadi community uh, was one of the earliest um, minorities in India to completely anglicize themselves and learn the English language. They not only learn, learn the English language, but they also adopted the Western attire and uh, English became their first language. They abandoned Arabic for English. They abandoned the Arabian attire for Western 
attire. And as a result of this, with the passage of time, they did not, they came to have the same sensibilities and same sensitivities as the Westerners had. So they did not uh, have the, uh, those inhibitions as the Indians had when it came to the indulgence of women in performing arts. So braving all odds to their reputation and otherwise, the women from the Baghdadi community took up, accepted uh, roles, acted in films. But that was in the early phase of the Indian cinema when the films were still silent. And as I mentioned, the Baghdadi Jews never bothered to learn any Indian language. They mastered the English language and with the passage of time, it became their first language. But when sound was introduced in cinema, when talkies came to be produced, they found themselves incapable of delivering dialogues in Hindi and Urdu, the most widely spoken languages then and still, and uh, the, the languages in which films were produced in Bombay. So they found it hard. It was very difficult for them to deliver dialogues in these languages. And this is what brought about an abrupt end to their very successful film careers. Only those of them who were quick enough to learn these languages could manage to continue with their film careers. But we can safely say that most of the earliest female stars of Indian cinema, particularly during its silent era, were Jewish women from the Baghdadi community. Another thing that uh, contributed to their success was their light skin color, which has always been, been greatly valued uh, in Indian aesthetics. So, so Navraj, now looking back from the beginning of 20th century uh, at this description, one gets not a very uh, 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 pretty picture, you know, identification with colonizer rather than with colonized on one hand, on the other hand, breaking all Jewish taboos. And on the third hand, if there's a third hand, acting uh, uh, and doing things that even prostitutes out of shame and propriety would refuse to do. How do you like that? Well, th this can be one way of looking at it. But the other way, and I think a better way to look at it would be that these were women who were brave, conscious of how it could dent their reputation. In spite of that, they were bold enough, they were courageous enough to take up roles in Indian cinema. And in doing so, they encouraged women from respectable families, from other communities to follow suit. So, and the Baghdadi Jews are not an isolated case of a minority community uh, deliber deliberately trying to anglicize itself. Another religious minority that uh, adopted the English language and English ways was the Zoroastrian community, the Parsi community. And this, uh, the acquirement of fluency in the English language enabled these communities to emerge as intermediaries between the British and the Indians. It immensely benefited them uh, when it came to commerce. They were middlemen minorities. And uh, it also enabled them to escape the worst aspect of British imperialism or British Raj. Did Persian was, women, did Persian women, Zoroastrian women also uh, act yes, in uh, movies? They did, they did. And, it, and this uh, identifying with the British, benefiting from their light skin color and identifying uh, with the British and aspiring for the status of Europeans, this was seen as a way for them to escape the worst aspect of British imperialism, which was racism. Racism? So, yes, yes. There, there were benefits that they could have if they were identified wow. as... I, are you telling me that racism was brought to India by British? I'm not saying that, but the British did. 
the, the, the uh, being uh, whiter and being in yes, charge, yes, yes. they set a particular model for viewing people, right? Yes, yes, they, mm -hmm. they did so. They did so. They did so. They, there certainly was. Racism. Because I know among Indians, there's also outside yes. of British, there's yes, division yes. by color yes. much yes. stronger than any British culture. Well, th that, those diff that those differences aren't based primarily on skin color. Mm -hmm. But in the, in the case of the British, what emerged as a reason for discrimination was, of course, the fact that the Indians were darker in skin color. So it was easy to distinguish them, them from the whites and they tended to look down upon these dark skinned mm -hmm. Indians. Not, not all British. But there was no scarcity of such British who had uh, a race, who had a racist attitude towards Indians. Just a little bit outside of the topic, uh, Rajas, you know, those rulers of different areas, were yes. they lighter color or darker color than they majority were, of their subjects? They, 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 they were just like uh, the rest of the Indian population. Meaning no difference, right? No, no, no difference. That well, Indians aren't of any one color. Even with among Indians, there is a lot of color variation. But but, but to, but to the, the the British, mm -hmm. the Indians were in general a dark-skinned people, mm -hmm. and and they whatever was different from them was was seen as inferior. It's not just a matter of skin color. You know, there is this concept well, of, but the, of, the, of, 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 of the burden of the white man. That is, right. they felt obligated to civilize the colonized. They tended to look down upon the culture and the civilization of the colonized. Hmm. They were reluctant to, to recognize the, that civilization. So th th there are a number of uh, things that go together. People who rediscovered India's ancient mm -hmm. heritage and introduced Indians to their ancient heritage were the British. Mm. There were British archaeologists, British linguists who rediscovered India's glorious past and introduced the Indians to it. And in their colonization of India, uh, British were also supported by Karl Marx. I mean, he thought it was a good thing because British are bringing civilization to India and they're bringing, you know, speeding up the conversion of the world to a better communist society of the future. Yeah, there were all kinds of attitudes at work at once. There was also a great admiration that was displayed by a number of British for ancient Indian civilization, Indian culture. Yeah, there were a number of such British civil servants who became great linguists of Indian languages, great scholars of Indian languages, who made, who made, 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 made careers in archaeology and linguistics and uh, theology in India. So, Indians I, 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 I grew up on uh, Indian fairy tales. You know, <laughs> Indian yeah. fairy tales. This is one place that where I want to go one day. You know, India, ride on some elephant. You know, and just go where Mowgli uh, went. You know, things like this. I, I think uh, India has always had this uh, very old tradition of tamasha, that is narrating tales along with music and singing. And this is what got transported to cinema in India. It is for this reason, Indian cinema has produced more musicals than films of other genre. But Jews did not play any role in that part of uh, uh, Indian cinema history, right? Because you said that they did not speak Hindi and they did not uh, speak yes. well, Urdu. Well, well I, I did say so. I, what I meant by that is that there were a number of Jewish female actors working in Indian cinema during its silent era. Many of them could not continue with their film careers because of their inability to speak, to deliver dialogues in Indian languages. But those of them 
who were quick to learn Indian languages, they could continue with their film careers. And one such actress was Salochana. Salochana, whose period is 1907 to 1983. She was the most popular Indian actress of her times. And she, she also owned a film company. It was her film company, Imperial, that in fact produced India's first talkie. Alamara. Mm. And this and the script, the screenplay of this first talkie was interestingly written by a Jewish man, not a Baghdadi Jew, but a Ben Israel Jew. His name was Joseph Penker. Joseph David Penker. Joseph David Penker wrote the screenplay of India's first talkie film, Alamara. Wow. Uh, and, 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 and when the first film in color was produced in India. The female lead was played by a Jewish actress, Nadira, often called Nadira, whose real name was Florence Ezekiel or Farhat Ezekiel. She was a Baghdadi Jewish woman. And who, was that, who was that uh, uh, Jewish actress that was very, very beautiful, but she was very sort of standoffish and uh, uh, untouchable uh, in terms of, uh, you know, very picky, very choosy. Uh, who, who, I can't remember. Pa -pa 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 Perhaps you're talking about Salochana, whose real name was Ruby Myers. She came to be seen as the epitome of Indian beauty. So this is, this is the actress you just mentioned, right? Ru yeah, Ruby, Ruby Myers, whose film name was Salochana, was the most popular actress of her, of her times. She, uh, and she was the one whose earnings exceeded the earnings of the governor of Bombay. And, uh, but she was, was she the same one who died in total isolation and poverty? Yes, 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 yes. She, she, she was the one. She was down to penny pinching. She was down to penny pinching when she. How, when she how, it. how did it happen that from being so rich, you know, and so beautiful, she ended up being alone and. Uh, 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 well, totally with, with penniless. Uh, well, uh, uh, as she grew older, the 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 roles, uh, she she got the offers, the film offers that she got started. Uh, started getting started dwindling and uh, then came a time when there was no work for her so she that is for this reason and she hadn't been uh, uh, wise enough to save for the, the rainy days so she, she was down to penny pinching as simple as this. And, and, and no family huh? yes no no family she she, she did not marry wow 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 you know it, I it's, we need she, to she, she, had, she had an affair with her co-star, D. Billy Moria, who was a Zoroastrian, and she was in a position to dictate terms. For a number of years, uh, she dictated that the male lead had to be played by D. By D. Billy Moria. So she was, he was the person who played the male lead in uh, most of her films. Are there any uh, Jewish actors, producers, directors, uh, today in Indian uh, 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 cinema? Yes, there are, but few people realize that they are Jewish by descent. Although they are Jewish, according to the Jewish oral halacha, because they are all born of Jewish mothers, but it's not possible to make this out by their names, because mm. they either have Hindu names or Muslim names. For, for example, the India's first beauty queen of India, the first Miss India, was actually a, a Jewish woman, a Baghdadi Jewish woman from Kolkata. Her name was Esther Victoria Abraham. She, she then became a very popular film actress uh, with the name Pramila. That was her pseudonym. Pramila married a Muslim man who was already married. He agreed to become his second wife. When India got partitioned and Pakistan was carved out of British India, her Muslim husband, who was also a very successful actor, decided to migrate to Pakistan with his first wife, 
and his children from her. He also asked Pramila to join him. Pramila had come to have uh, three sons and a daughter uh, uh, for, uh, with uh, this uh, Muslim actor. Did, did, did she convert to Islam? She did not convert to Islam. And she also refused to join her husband in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So she stayed in India while her husband moved to Pakistan with his first wife. One of her sons is a very successful Indian character artist. His name is Heather Ali. He, so here is, is one example of an actor who is Jewish according to the Jewish oral law halakha. I, I cannot speak very confidently as to what his religious faith is, whether it is Islam or Judaism or a syncretism of these two religions. But what I do know, which he has spoken about very openly in interviews, is that he is uh, very proud of his Jewish descent. And he has never tried to hide this that his mother was Jewish. Another example is of three brothers, Siddharth Roy Kapoor, Kunal Roy Kapoor, and Aditya Roy Kapoor. Siddharth Roy Kapoor is one of India's most successful film producers. And his two younger brothers are film actors, Kunal Roy Kapoor and Aditya Roy Kapoor. They, their father is Hindu, but their mother, is Jewish, not Baghdadi, but a Bene Israel. Her name really? Is you, you mean that Raj Kapoor married a Jewish woman? Not, not Raj Kapoor, not Raj Kapoor. Here are these three actors who have the same surname that uh -huh. Raj Kapoor had. It's just the commonality of the surname. Okay. So they, are, they are absolutely different. And these three men are sons of a Jewish woman, Salome Aaron. Mm -hmm. Salome Aaron is not a Baghdadi Jew, but a Beni Israel Jew. And by profession, she has been a choreographer. And uh, she also was crowned Miss India in a, in a beauty pageant in the 1970s. So, we, so Jewish women have not only been very successful in cinema, but they have also, a number of them have also been crowned beauty queen in India. Amazing. Amazing. I mean, and how many Jews we're talking about in India? I mean, what is the population of? Uh, uh, well, the, the, esti the, the estimates of the Jewish population in India vary from 3,000 to 10,000. The reason why we haven't been able to reach uh, uh, to reach consensus on the exact number is because it becomes it be remains debatable whether to count the Jews who have emerged in India as a result of Judaizing movements or not. Mm -hmm. But if we count those Jews as well, then perhaps the number would be 10,000. But do we exclude the Jews who have emerged in India as a result of Judaizing movements? Then the number may be less than 3,000. What about 100 years ago? How many Jews were at that time? 100 years ago. Yeah, because that's I when the movie the number of Jews at that time must have been between 20,000 and 25,000, not more than that. So, and, uh, and, 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 and you must, must bear in mind that most of these successful film actresses came from the Baghdadi community, not from the Ben Israel community, not from the Cochini community. And how and we, are, is and we are talking only of the Hindi film industry, but, uh, but I know that there was a very successful. Jewish film actress also in the Bangla or Bengali film industry in mm. Calcutta, what is now called Kolkata. Her name, her film name was Arti Kumari. I do not remember her real Jewish name, but the film name was Arti Kumari. Mm. So, in your in your mind, how do you uh, how do you explain such uh, percentage-wise overwhelming contribution of Jews of India to uh, the movie making industry there. Um, what is your explanation? Yes. The, f the fact is that Jews played as important a role in Indian cinema as the Jews did in Hollywood. It's just that the nature of these roles differed. 
in hollywood the jews were predominantly producers and founders of major film companies this is not the role that they played in indian cinema here they gained prominence uh, as film actresses but and, and as i explained that they could do so because women from other communities were reluctant to act in films and they did not have those inhibitions that indians had because so you're, they, you're you're saying not, that you're saying the jewish women at that time played those roles because they were better than those skinny uh, little men that played uh, women uh, previous to them that's what you're saying no this is not what i'm saying what? what i'm saying is that these jewish women did not attach taboo to acting in films it wasn't a taboo for them to act in films as was the case with uh, the indians mm -hmm. irrespective of what the religious persuasion was the, and it was a it was seen as taboo even by the co-religionists who were who had been resident in india for centuries that is the ben israel jews and the cochni jews this also explains as to why we never had a very, any successful jewish film actress from the ben israel community mm. we did have a have a male actor who was very successful from the ben israel community he he was popular with just his first name david david played a number of character roles in a number of films also in in a number of films produced by raj kapoor mm. so he, he was he was he was very very popular and if we talk of uh, film producers then there was a baghdadi jewish man who is now recognized as the father of uh, indian documentary filmmaking he was the chairman of the films division for a number of years and during his chairmanship uh, hundreds of documentary films were produced he is also widely acknowledged as the father of indian animation i'm talking about edwin myers who became popular as ezra mir wow Well, wow. so not only uh, actresses playing roles that prostitutes did not want to play, but also producers and uh, directors and writers and uh, um, people that actually made contribution to Indian cinema at almost every step of its development. Yes, and you know, had these Jewish women not agreed to act in films. I don't know how long more Indian films would have had to wait for women to act in films. Mm. Well, so it means that not always uh, doing something that is not considered appropriate at a particular time, you know, is always bad. Sometimes actually going against uh, uh, the uh, current may actually show that you are alive. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh I want to thank you very very much for this enlightened um conversation and for the information that you provided and I'm going to uh, uh do myself and I uh, advise uh, everybody else who is interested in the topic to go online and do search you know for uh Indian movies and uh, find there um the contribution that Jews of India made to development of that form of art in that one of the greatest countries of the world thank you very much navraz and thank you uh, very much i thank look you very much for this opportunity to speak on this subject thank you for speaking on the subject and i hope to talk to you next time uh, uh regarding the uh pashtuns and their a uh, tradition of their origin from the lost tribes of Israel right right i look forward to that thank, thank you very much and have a great day you too bye bye